you. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back. We're here live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV Silicon England. Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with Jeff Kelly, uh, um, analyst at wikibon.org, my co host. And our next guest is Anna Smalltree, director at Treasure Data. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So Treasure Data, one of the you know fast growing startups we've been watching for a while, but just all of a sudden busted out of nowhere. Just it's almost like they were storing all this data and then boom, straight up in growth and a lot of a lot of traction. So um, first question for you is, uh, where did all this traction come from? Was it just pent up energy, just kind of waiting to be launched or? Tell us a little bit about Treasure Data right now. Yeah, so Treasure Data has a really unique solution in this market. Uh, we offer, it's essentially software as a service for big data. So we have technology to help people acquire data and to store it, and then we give different interfaces for analysis. But a lot of our secret sauce is in our acquisition technology. So we focus on data that's created very, very rapidly, and we get it into our cloud environment. There was a lot of pent up demand about that. So about that issue of how to stream data into an environment and make it quickly available for analysis. So a lot of our early customers came to us because of this acquisition, the streaming capability. And they also wanted to focus on what they did best. So their core business, uh, analyzing their core business, and not necessarily worrying about the data infrastructure so much. So all that, uh, the big bet was on the ingestion side, right? Was that pretty much? The ingestion said? side and the storage side. So we're really good at data management at huge, huge scales and then make it rapidly making that data available for analysis. So that people, rather than worrying about building the infrastructure, maintaining it, monitoring, getting the pages, they can just focus on what I call the fun part. So doing all the analytics at the other end where you get value from the data. So kind of, yeah, I mean, I think we've been covering the cloud and big data, and we've been talking about, well, when are these two going to really kind of merge? Mm -hmm. And Treasure Data is one of those companies that's actually making it happen. Um, so, you know, First, we should point out that you and I used to work together at uh, we Tech sure did. Target, so it, we're having a slightly surreal moment here on the Cube. But this is, it's always fun on the Cube. You never it's know what's going to happen. So you never um, know what's going to happen yeah. exactly. So yeah, tell us a little bit about Treasure Data in terms of uh, you know the the different ways you kind of deliver your service because I know it's not just uh, kind of one size fits all. You guys approach it in a couple different ways. So kind of lay that out for us. Yeah. So we we do essentially have one primary service, but people use it in very different ways. So as I mentioned before, we tend to talk about it in three phases. So data acquisition, data storage, and data analysis. Some people are using that all in line. So they're streaming their data into our cloud environment, and then they're doing their analysis in the cloud. They're keeping it all in a cloud environment. Other people are putting us as part of a larger data ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So perhaps using us to ingest all that data that's coming in very rapidly, to store it at scale, so billions and billions of rows, sometimes 10 billion rows a day. So that's the kind of scale we're talking about. And they might then um, do some aggregations to bring down the size of the data and then export the results to another system internally where they might combine it with other data or bring it into another analytics environment or use an on-premise analytics tool. So we have these different models, one where we kind of fit into a larger data ecosystem and one where it's really the entire end-to-end -end solution being used in place. And where a company chooses to go might change over time. They might start in one place and then uh, hopefully as they get addicted to treasure data, <laughs> They're going to start to expand their use of it. Um, but we really try to make it open for integration into existing ecosystems, um, but also a full end-to-end -end solution. So if you just want to use that as your primary analytics and data management mm -hmm. solution, you can do that too. So providing end-to-end cloud storage is interesting, and certainly as a SaaS, it's a nice business model. We've always been supporting of that, and you know, we love it. It's great scale, um, and it's, it's agile. Uh, but yes. I got to ask you, a lot of people have been throwing that under the bus with the whole Nirvonix um, implosion of late. Um, Nirvonix was big cloud storage and they went out of business and then literally had two weeks people to move their data around. How do you guys address that issue with customers and say, well, we love the cloud, but we're not sure about the data. Is, is there a... Uh, a product that you guys have there? How do you solve that? How do you solve that conversation? So a few different things. We are committed to data portability. So you can export your data from Treasure Data anytime you want to. We're not trying to lock you in or charge a fee or make it difficult to get your data back. So uh, people will do that on a small scale when they're just doing queries and pushing the results out, uh, maybe to do some other things with that data. Um, people could do it anytime. They could take all their data. We hope they don't, but they could. And <laughs> we're very much committed to make, being an open platform for that. I think the other main difference is this, uh, this issue of acquisition 
the, an ingestion of the data. So there's a lot of cloud storage platforms where in order to get your data into the platform, you need to use FTP, you need to use bulk imports, and, and still FedExing disks is yeah. still a very, very popular way to get data into the cloud. And in fact, I found some news stories about cloud providers announcing the capability to take your mail. You know? <laughs> and now new capability, we can receive your disk and load it into our cloud environment. So our data streaming technology addresses a very big pain, which means you don't have to stage it and land it and then figure out how to get it into the cloud. But as that data is being created, our treasure agent technology sits right on the servers, right on the web server or the application server, and streams that data every few minutes into our environment. We provide reliability, um, compression, filtering, and transformation of that end node. So when the data gets to the cloud, um, it's available for analysis within just a few minutes of being created. And it's also, you're not trying to push this huge bulk uh, of data up up a you know small mm -hmm. pipe, but you're doing smaller bits of data on a more rapid basis. We've seen great success with like Splunk, for instance. Customers love that product; it just allows it sits there, and then new stuff kind of gets enabled out of that once they have that functionality. So I want to ask you the same kind of question for you guys: Have you seen some use cases where because once people get the data and they have, can act on it, some yeah. new insights come out of it? Can you give some examples of where you've seen that happen on your end with your customers? Yeah, so I, I think people have different ways that they're they're approaching this. So like I said, there's this, this way of augmenting your data warehouse with big data capabilities. So we have some customers, one of our customers is a large retailer. They announced a mobile application, and they really wanted to understand sort of how their mobile users were engaging with the product, how that compared with what people were doing online, and how that compared with what they were doing in the stores. Now I can't talk about the exact results because uh, people tend to be a little closed lips about their <laughs> analytic results, um, but what they were able to do do is get a, a well-rounded view of the customer. So kind of that old 360 degree view of the customer thing that we've written so many stories about in our time. Indeed. Um, but being able to get this, this complete view of the customer and understand where the differences in interactions are in a mobile environment versus a web environment versus retail environment, where some of those connections were and how to leverage that to make more money for their mm -hmm. business. Um, so I want to ask kind of a, a little bit bigger picture question, kind of playing off what John mentioned about concerns around the cloud. Mm. Um, so we've you know we've heard about uh, one one of the mega vendors in particular was really pushing the big data meets cloud uh, marketing, but we haven't seen a lot of it. Is now is the cloud ready? Do you think really for uh, to to be a place to store all this data to do a lot of these workloads? Um, and and why is that now? Do you think and why is now the right time for a company like Treasure Data? Yeah, so I, I do think that the cloud is ready. I think there's some types of data which will always remain on premises, and that mm -hmm. might be, um, you know, really sensitive data, really regulatory, regulated data, healthcare data, um, about my health especially. No, <laughs> uh, but you know, there, there's some types of data that, that are going to stay in those environments. But the cloud, uh, you know, since we've been writing about it, really has evolved to be massively scalable, a lot more secure. Mm -hmm. um, even getting data into the cloud is a lot easier than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So even the increases in sort of network connectivity and bandwidth with and being able to get more pipes into the cloud has made it a lot more ready. And you have this explosion of different service providers, new architectures, and new platforms, which I think make the cloud an ideal place for big data. Um, I, I think we're also seeing a sort of shift. It used to be a competency to do your data management, to store it all in-house. Mm. I think the competency is shifting more to what can you do with the data. And now it's a little bit more commoditized to do data management, which makes the cloud a perfect place to do it at scale. Mm. So they buy you know, millions of servers or however you know, much it takes to store in the, the different platforms and environments um, and are able to scale that rapidly. And that's really a core competency of a lot of cloud providers that doesn't need to be your core competency as, as a business anymore. You can focus on the fun part and getting valued. Yeah. Hunt, I want to ask you a question to kind of shift gears kind of the strata conference. I know sure. uh, given your, your background, I'd like you to get your editorial perspective. Mm. If we were editing the show, yeah. the, the narratives coming out of Strata. A lot of noise, a lot of signal, a lot of different conversations, a lot of startups, names yeah. I've never heard of. Tons. <laughs> it's like Tons that company, of names never, never heard of it, that's going to die, uh, that's going to be gone. Um, you know, but let's, let's be critical, let's, let's edit the narrative. What is the story, in your opinion, coming out of Strata this year? And then talk about your story with Treasure Data, and how's that uh, vector into the bigger picture? Yeah, so I, I, I've seen the same thing. A lot of names I've never heard. And as tech journalists, we used to have the unenviable, or maybe enviable, job of trying to figure out exactly what all these people did and really pushing until we understood that. I really feel a lot of emphasis on getting value from data and doing it quickly. 
So a lot of these tools are focused on either getting Hadoop up and running faster or getting your data ready for analysis faster. Mm -hmm. So how can we shorten the time it takes to actually start getting value from data? And that's a place where cloud services can really help. Well, there are a lot more tools for doing data analysis on this big data, so being able to process it at scale. So I think we're, we're feeling a lot of emphasis on how quickly you can do it, a lot more tools to enable you in the sort of big data ecosystem. And, and I think Treasure Data fits right into that. Uh, we're right, right in the mix there. We get people into production in days, uh, less than two weeks oftentimes. So we're really focused on how soon can we get you to run that first query. Uh, and I think I hear that you know, from different angles. There's people who are trying to get you up and running on premises faster or give you different tools to make it easier to use Hadoop. Um, as we've sort of seen that Hadoop adoption curve go up, people have really started to understand and appreciate that it's hard. You know, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, building your kit car from scratch. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can put a bigger engine in it, but you also still have to build the whole thing. So I think we, we see a lot of interest in how can I make this easier and faster. So here's another question for you. So, <laughs> love, love, love the cube, extract the data um, from you. Uh, so if you had to put people into like crowd spots or like clusters of crowd around certain topics, obviously data science is one you see people yeah. really, you know, chomping on the red meat on that one. What other areas do you see the conversations happening around here at this show? In, in the big data market right now, I see data science is one. What are the big crowd clusters out there talking about? What are mm. the big conversation pits of, 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 of interests? So I think that data movement is a big one. Um, so people figuring out how they're going to move their data around. And that counts just for, you know, for collecting the data, so the first stage of ingestion, which I talked about a lot, but also for analysis. So are you going to need to move the data into another BI or analysis tool? Can you analyze it in place? Um, even things like sharing data. So how you're moving these this data around or not, you know, whether you can leave it in place and do what you need to do with it and, and share it. So I, I definitely got a lot of questions about that. Um, I think there's a, a core of people who are focused on infrastructure and architecture and how can we process things faster, so getting the performance out of big data processing that is needed, mm -hmm. um, and that depends a lot on you know, how you architect it. Um, so I would say, and, and then I think the data science and analytics people are very focused on, on value. How soon can I get value? Can I use languages like SQL that I already know? Um, how quickly can I start to see results and, and begin to go? Avi Mehta was uh, just commenting earlier, uh, entrepreneur we've been following, great guy, used to work at Bank of America, Data, a successful startup, uh, uh, and loves, loves to talk about some of the trends, but one of the things he made to comment was, is if you're a database tooling company, you might as well just fold tent right now, because that's beyond where we're at now. More people that want solutions and outcomes. Yeah. Um, would you agree with that? And, and what other areas would you say are, hey, old ideas, not translating into this modern era? Old idea, okay. So, I mean, I do think we're seeing a shift to more of a build versus buy decision in the big data space, partly because of the early experiences of, of early adopters who, who felt a lot of um, a lot of pain when, when some of those early Hadoop implementations. Um, so uh, let's see, can you rephrase your question? So the database, time? he's coming as the database guy should just not focus just yeah. on selling the database tools, which is an old business model for hundreds of millions okay. of dollars as vendors out there, we know they are. Um, so the question is, what old methods are being kind of put out there today as viable ventures, when in reality oh. the market's way beyond that? Um, could be um, point solutions, white spaces, like what you guys are doing. I think you guys are going to cutting edge SaaS with storage. Very interesting, you got ingestion. Yeah, the, the old uh, enterprise data warehouse um, model, if you will, yeah. of, you know, that we've written about. Of, what are the dying business models 18 months to the model warehouse. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe I ask the question, what are the dying <laughs> business models being displaced by disruptive technologies? Well, so I do think that this issue of building it yourself is a dying business model. Um, you know, you don't have to have your whole own infrastructure. You can, you can build things within the cloud. Um, I, you know, I don't know that database tooling is going away completely. There's a lot of legacy infrastructures that people still need access to. We talk to tons of people who are still on mainframe technology. Yeah. So I think that some of those ways of, of thinking about a monolithic a mainframe or a monolithic data warehouse is going away. So we have these much more distributed environments of tools doing what they do best. But it has to fit in with legacy architectures. You can leverage things like the cloud to add big data capabilities quickly, um, but it needs to fit into this, this whole ecosystem. So I would say some things are becoming uh, more preferable than in the past, but we still need to integrate with the past. Well, yeah, I think you know one of the things we've been talking about the last few days is I think this year we're going to see fewer um, announcements around new products and a lot more announcements around partnerships and integration with legacy systems um, and you know just just taking the big data space there's so many moving parts um, from the data integration to the analysis to the to the output yeah. 
and then you've got legacy systems, as you say, that aren't going away. Mainframes are still around. Um, you know, there's companies like uh, the Sync Sort, which is kind of was a mainframe company, is reinventing themselves, and they've, they've, uh, you know, been working on kind of offloading some of that mainframe data to to big data and Hadoop, whatever. Um, but talk a little bit about Treasure Data's, I guess, your partnership partnership strategy, um, sure. and a little bit how you do that integration, whether it's from the 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 legacy architecture that people have in their uh, data centers and then, you know, with the end output, whether it's somebody like Tableau or some of the other BI players. So the first integration point is around ingestion and that's how we're getting data from the, the, the places where it's being created into our system. We have some very unique data acquisition technology that I mentioned earlier. So that's sort of a point of integration, but that acquisition technology um, is key because it can run on a lot of different kinds of servers. Um, there's actually many different targets that it can output to, treasure data being one of them. Um, so that's one integration point. I think another one is our ability to, to take data in multiple forms, so streaming data or bulk import. Another integration point is this ability to export to your existing environment mm. so that you can, as I mentioned earlier, the case of having landing a lot of big data, doing some aggregations to bring it down in size or just get at what you want, and then you can export that to your, to your current environment. And then a big one for us is that we integrate with the front end analytics tools. So our core competency is in taking in that data, data management, and then making it available for analysis. Mm -hmm. But we partner with people like Tableau. We recently announced um, with them a couple weeks ago a formal partnership. Partnership. So Tableau does the visualizations in the front end. So they are able to reach into Treasure Data, uh, either Tableau in the cloud working with Treasure Data in the cloud, or even Tableau on premises working with mm -hmm. Treasure Data in the cloud. So this allows people to augment their Tableau environments with new big data capabilities mm -hmm. really quickly. They're not the only BI provider we work with. We also work with Metric Insights, mm -hmm. specifically on our gaming solution, and that's for digital gaming analytics. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really sort of big area. And then we have several other BI providers. We can really support any BI mm. tool. We have ODBC and JDBC drivers. And as our customers request them, which is you know more often happening as it pushes out into the greater business and analysts hear about treasure data and say, I could have big data capabilities in two weeks. Uh, yes, I want that. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can take their existing tool, their Tableau, whatever interface they're used to working with, and just give them new data capabilities, then they've they're, they've got an environment they're familiar with. Now they have more data they can work with. But golden, they have a lot more that yeah. they can do. Um, so I think we're just about out of time. But I want to ask: so what's what's going to happen this year with Treasure Data? What's kind yeah. of on your roadmap to the extent that you can share? Um, as John pointed out, you guys kind of just hit the scene really um, in a big way recently. Sure. Um, so I think people are interested, you know, where are you guys going with this? What's on your roadmap and what are some of your big priorities this year? So we've had incredible momentum with our service. Um, like I said, it's software as a service for big data. It's a managed service environment. So that, that just sort of as a standalone solution mm -hmm. has been extremely popular. And that's why in the last year we quickly passed one trillion rows of data loaded into our service. Uh, two trillion and three trillion. So we, we've had this incredible momentum. We have over a hundred customers now, and that's our service being launched a little bit over a year. So the last year has been incredible momentum with our, our basic treasure data service. Mm -hmm. This year we'll be announcing new solutions. So these are things where we've configured the data collection and we've configured dashboards working with our partners on the other end to provide a complete solution in certain vertical mm -hmm. industries. And the two you'll hear about next from us are digital gaming, as I talked with. They have so much data. They're collecting mm -hmm. data about every interaction a player does in the game every move, every purchase, when they abandon. So they have tons of data. So digital gaming is a big solution we'll announce. Also advertising technology. So all those clicks and impressions and where we put things and which creative to use. You'll hear more from us around that. And there's a few other industries that we have our toes in. I do think increasingly Internet of Things is, is what you'll associate with treasure data. So we have some early pilots working with sensors. So much is instrumented now. Yeah. You know, and there's sensors in a lot of places that aren't even turned on, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word. So yeah. they're there, they're ready to collect data, but people haven't had a place or the wherewithal mm -hmm. to actually collect them. So Internet of Things is where you're really gonna see us in the Well, long that's, term. we're definitely gonna be watching that. We've done uh, some research with GE and their industrial internet uh, yeah. movement. So that'll be really interesting to watch. And I think it's a really smart move to focus on verticals and oh. solutions. That's what, as John said, that's what people want, I think. And especially as we kind of move into the early mainstream adopters and big data, they don't want to put together their own to do clusters and do a lot of this integration work. They want solutions, and that's Focus where on the value. yeah, and that's where you talk to. You can talk to a business person who signs the check, and that's good for the market and the industry. So yes. all right, well, thanks so much for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it. Treasure data here live inside the cube in Silicon Valley. Big data SV hashtag Big data SV, and uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.